on our one Monday night session. And uh, we believe God, we trust God. It was an exciting week. The devil is a liar. The word of God is the only truth. I believe that the word of God will come forth in power tonight. That God will answer your prayer. I trust the Lord that the sick will be healed. And uh, everyone that are watching here tonight, that God will do something supernatural in your life. Praise the name of Jesus. Tonight I would like to speak on the book of Nehemiah. Um, it's a very interesting book, very exciting book. And uh, when I started to read this one scripture, it just popped out to me. And that's why we go to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Now, we must understand the setting where this happened, that the people of Israel came out of captivity. And when they came to Jerusalem, the, the walls of the city was broken down. It was in ruins. And uh, there was so much turmoil and uh, opposition for the rebuilding of the wall. Of the wall, and uh, but Nehemiah, with a word from God and a passion in his heart, what is very important, beloveds, if you have a word from God, and you if you have passion in your heart for the gospel of the kingdom of God, when the fire is burning, God will carry you through. In spite of your opposition. Yes. In spite of your position. Mm -hmm. God grant you favor and you stand strong upon the word of God. Then the word of God will come forth in power. And you will see the fulfillment of the word of God. 2020 once again beloved. Is this one year um, that is very... How will I say it will stand out in the life of people. And that is because of what they've been through. 2020 was a year of captivity. 2020 was a year where people lost a lot of stuff. Some people, I'm not talking about the globalists, they were exploding in money. They make the poor poorer and they make themselves richer. But we know that God is greater than your circumstances. I want to pray tonight and believe God that in spite of your situation, circumstances, that God will break forth in your life. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power that's in your word. Thank you that we can gather around your word and discuss your word and minister your word unto your people. Thank you that you came to give us life and give it more abundantly. In Jesus' mighty name. Now I said in Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 3, and they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. When you come out of captivity, the Bible talks about the survivors. But I know there's a scripture in the Bible that says that we are more than overcomers. So God didn't call us to be survivors of our circumstances, but to be overcomers. What is an overcomer? An overcomer is one that dominate and rule. So in spite of your problem, in spite of your situation, in spite of your circumstances, you were not called to be the tail. You are the head and not the tail. You are from above and not from beneath. So God gave us divine authority to rule in the midst of our enemies. And because of our circumstances doesn't dictate it, but the word of God and our position in Christ. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. It means we are in a place of rulership. So let me tell you tonight, beloveds, I just saw a short clip. Somebody forwarded it to me um, where Julius Malema were um, threatening the police and said they will do whatever they want. I want to ask the president of this country, why don't you stand up and let the government take him to court 
or put him in jail. Is somebody that needs to be in jail. You cannot incite violence. You cannot abuse your voice and still get away with it. And tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We remove Julius Malema from that position of power. He will have no power. He will have no authority. His power base has this been um, dismantled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, what is a prison? What is a captivity? A prison is a place where you are a slave or either in a place where you are in a prison. It means whatever you do are restricted. There's restriction placed upon your life. You cannot uh, do what you want to do. If I just take an uh, example today or make a scenario of something, uh, somebody, he planned to go to the United States, but he can't go to the United States because there's a restriction on what is happening. Like, for instance, if you want to go to the United States today, um, you have to go because of an emergency. COVID-19 changed the rules. It means there's a restriction upon your life. And many people, they, uh, uh, if somebody's in the hospital, you can't go to the hospital but because there's a restriction. Or when somebody's in a prison, there's a certain area or in that compound where they are in that's the only place that they can move freely outside is illegal so the bible tells me and they said to me the survivors who are left from the captivity so there were people that came out of captivity and now they survived but Jesus didn't call us to survive. Yes. He called us to dominate. He called us to be more than overcomers. Yes. And the Bible said they came out of the, in the province and there are great distress and reproach. 2020, a lot of families were under reproach, distress, because they lost their jobs, they lost their income. Some families are uh, in distress because they lost family members. Um, a lot of families are in distress and reproach because of threats that were made against their lives. Um, you cannot move freely. Now the Bible says the wall of Jerusalem is broken down. You must understand, beloved, is the survivors in captivity is number one. And number two, the walls were broken down. When the walls are broken down, what does wall speak of? Wall speaks of protection. Walls give you protection in a certain space and in a certain atmosphere. So the walls of Jerusalem is broken down. So when the walls is broken down, it basically means that there is no protection. Now in Proverbs chapter 25, 28 said, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a is like a is like one that is broken down and without walls. It basically means, beloved, that your situation there is no protection. So your, your, your lifestyle, if you don't have rule over your own spirit, uh, losing your temper, losing whatever, and uh, then there is no protection. Many times, beloved, the walls are built for protection. Now the Bible also tells me that there are also keepers of the wall. In Psalms chapter 5 verse 7, the watchman that went about the city, found me, they wounded me, the keepers of the wall took me away and removed the veil from me. Now, the keepers of the wall are those who have to watch over the wall. Mm -hmm. But here we find out there was the keepers of the wall were people that were doing stuff that they were not supposed to do. In the songs of Solomon, he said, the keepers of the wall took me away 
and took the veil away from me. So I was wounded. God called us to be watchmen on the wall. And we are not there to wound people but to break and lose them from every bondage. So number one, beloved, we must understand captivity is where God wants to bring us out. God wants to bring us out of captivity. In Luke chapter 4, 17, 18, the Bible said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to set at free, to set free those who who are wounded, those who are in prison, to set the captives free. So there's an anointing to break prison doors, to open prison doors, even in, in the book of Psalm 120, uh, 102 verse 20. There the Bible said, um, He deliver us from the gates of death. He set us free. So death is also a prison. He deliver you out of prison. So those who are sick are in prison. But when they come out of that sickness and out of their disease, their body need to cooperate. It basically means healing begin to take place slowly. But God wants to set us free. He wants to deliver us completely and sometimes in our situation what happened is when you are in prison or in captivity that your situation is very difficult i mean they came out they were under distress in reproach when you're in reproach it means people looking down on you they said you will amount to nothing you will never rise you don't have the ability God will not do it for you. But we serve a mighty God. We serve a great God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a miracle working God. Here in Isaiah 49 verse six, uh, 16. He said, see I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are forever before me. Amen. Your walls are forever before me. Amen. Psalm 49 verse 16. He engraved you on the palm of his hand. Mm. Now what is a wall? It's a wall. Uh, we will find out uh, that walls are there for protection. Yeah. It is the righteousness of God. It's your protection. And how do you protect uh, uh, yourself? If we go to the book of, of Ephesians, the Bible also tells me that when you go, you have to put on the armor of God. You have to take up the shield of faith. Amen. Faith is very important to build a wall. If you don't have faith in your life, there will not be a wall. What breaks down the wall? Immorality. What breaks and destroy the world, the, the walls, bloodshed in our nation, corruption. What what uh, uh, breaks down the wall of protection over this nation, over your life, over your family? When we disregard and disobey the word of God, it means we are without protection. Yeah. There's no protection. The only protection that we have is the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. If you're not a child of God, you are not protected. But if you're a child of God, of the living God, you don't fear the devil. Behold, I give unto you power. Luke chapter 10, 19. To tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the works of the devil. So he give us that power. He give us that authority to tread upon serpents. To tread upon scorpions. It means it's unlimited power over the works of the devil. And every agent of darkness uh, that operate. Mm. That the enemy use. So there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. So God deliver us from evil. He deliver us from the hand of the evil one. So he said, 
God said, I set watchmen upon the wall. Isaiah 62 verse 6. Watchmen on the wall. So he placed watchmen on the wall. Why? To be a lookout. To see what the enemy wants to do. So if the walls are broken down and been destroyed by the enemy, captivity comes because of a life of sin. Yes, captivity Lord. come because of what the previous generation has done in our lives there is no hope for those who are in captivity but I'm here with good news uh, that God still set the prisoners free yes. he still delivered those who are captive uh, by the power of the might of the living God he came to set you free he came to deliver us from the gates of hell Oh, what a wonderful name. What a powerful name that there is in Jesus. Amen. In uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, the Bible talks about that he set watchmen. He was looking for a man. And the Bible talks about an ish man to build up the wall. In the old King James, he said, to build up a hedge. A hedge, it's a encirclement that God placed around you to build up a wall so that that nation would not be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So God is still looking for men and women to be builders of the walls of protection. Mm -hmm. So the walls of protection is when we know the word of God, speak the word of God, and be men and women of prayer. Amen. And when you begin to decree and prophesy prophetically, speak into the atmosphere, you build the wall by prophesying into your future, speaking into your future, yes. speaking what God said yes. over your life. That is what people are who build wall, uh, walls and let me tell you beloved there are many places in this nation or in the life of our communities where the walls are broken down because of drug addiction all kinds of alcohol addiction alcohol abuse and all these kind of stuff that are going on people are bound by it but I'm here to tell you today that God is raising up a wall. I said God is raising up yes. a wall Amen. and he's raising up people that will raise up a wall and stand in the gap so that the wall will be raised up so that the land would not be destroyed. I give the Lord all the praise and I give him all the glory. What a mighty God we yes. serve. What an awesome God we serve. So God is looking for somebody that will be able to build a wall. There is something that we need to understand. The next thing that the Bible talks about. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. Mm. Now, what does gate speak to me? Gate speaks of a place of entry. Mm. It means you come through a gate to visit a place. Yeah. Now in the olden days, there was walls around the city and certain gates in Jerusalem. You will find the different gates, the Bethlehem gate, all the kinds of gate, the dung gate. And that was entrance, the lion gate, <coughs> to, act, to get access to the city. And then the elders would come and sit at the gate. Sometimes the king will come and sit at the gate. Let me tell you, if you're in the house of God, if you're a believer, you are a person at the gate. So what you allow to enter into your life will enter the city. Oh. What you allow to enter into your community, will uh, uh, what you tolerate, you cannot terminate. Oh. So if you tolerate the works of the devil and allow the, the drug houses and this uh, 
Shabins are all over the place destroying our community and you don't speak up against it you don't pray against it it means beloved that you responsible that the gates of the city being burned down because you are the person that are responsible for the morality what enter into the city so if you don't speak up against it it means you allow these stuff to come into your community. You must not only speak up against it, you must pray against it. You must pass against it. Yes. If the gates are burned down, beloved, in uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 16, 18, 19, um, uh, the Bible said that uh, Jesus said that Peter, you are the church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell. So even hell has a gate. People operate from a position of darkness. Amen. Against the church of the living God. And he said the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So the gates of hell, the gates of death, gates is entry points. Mm. So gates of hell enter into your community gates of death yes there are scriptures where the bible said the gates of death and this is what psalm 107 verse 20 says when i cry out to the lord amen then he deliver me from the gates of death mm. from the gates of hell when i cry out unto the lord so when the gates are broken down in your life, it means the enemy can enter. Yes. And how do we raise up the gates? By standing upon the word of God, believing the word of God, trusting God. Say, Lord, your word cannot fail. Walk the walk, talk the talk. We do what the word says. The word of God cannot fail in our life. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 23 verse 19. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. 23 verse 19. Let me just find it. He also stationed gatekeepers at the gate of the Lord's temple so that no one who was in any way unclean might enter. Can I read it again, beloveds? This is such a powerful scripture. He also stationed gatekeepers at the gates of the Lord's temple so that no one who was in any way unclean might enter. Many times, beloveds, now in our lives, many people join the house of God, become part of the church. Even today, we were reminded of somebody that became part of our, wasn't part of the church, but of the, of the Bible study group, but didn't listen to anybody. Mm. Call herself a prophetess, nobody anointed her. Even told the people I'm intimidated by a gift. But the problem is with that beloved. It was a deceiving and lying spirit. Unclean spirit. Operating in witchcraft, domination and sorcery. We saw the demons manifest after a stern rebuke. Powers of hell was exposed. So if we tolerate and allow it to enter. So sometimes people come, they devil in the account. They enter into the house of God and they think they can get away with it. Mm. At other times there are people that come to the house of God. They do all kinds of funny stuff. They still want to have their beer and all their stuff going on and drinking. Humanizing and going on. It is unclean stuff. And then they still want to come and take to the house of God and to the church of the living God. Let me tell you, let me just read it again. 
He said, you also station gatekeepers at the gate of the Lord's temple. So as a believer, every believer that is called by God, the gates that's been broken down, burned down in your life. God place you in your family as a watchman and as a gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. What you tolerate enter into your house will manifest into your house. If you allow the devil to take charge of your life, come into your life, rule your life, govern your life, then you're responsible for what the devil is doing in your life. He stationed gatekeepers at the gates of the Lord's temple. Amen. Doesn't the Bible tell me individually, knowing not that you are the temple. temple of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the living God dwells in you. So in our own life, what we, what we speak, what we see, and what we watch and what we do, we have to be gatekeepers of our own life. If we do not watch our walk, if we do not do what God says, and we allow things that is not according to the word of God, then we will have a problem as gatekeepers. Gatekeepers are protectors of the gate. But the Bible tells me in Nehemiah, the gates are burned down. It was destroyed. Did the enemy destroy the gates of your life? The sanctuary of God. What is it that you do that give the devil the access to destroy your life? I want to read the whole scripture again. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress. They are in great distress. The Bible said in great distress. If you are in distress tonight, God will answer you. Yes. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken Amen. down. But I pray tonight that every wall that's been broken down in your life, the wall of protection, the wall of salvation, the wall of healing, the wall of uh, uh, abundance and the prosperity of God. Because if you, if poverty steps in, it means the wall has been broken down. We raised up a wall of the protection of the living God Amen. upon your life tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We must give him praise. We must give him glory. We must magnify his name. Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Many people don't understand. But when you go to the hospital, you enter the gates of death. It's the valley of the shadow of death. Why? That is where demonic powers rule, govern. There's such an uh, attraction of the power of darkness. You will find out if you go and visit a lot of people in the hospital, unless you know how to uh, uh, come up against the gates of death. Pray sometimes for people with a certain disease in a hospital. Then later on that same disease, jump on your wine. Because you enter the gates of death. So you have to close down the gates of death. You say, death, you will not touch me. COVID-19, you will not touch me. Um, um, accidents, you will not touch me. Why? Because that's an entry. You know, sometimes unexplainable things happen to people. Unexplainable things happen to people. And you wonder, why did it happen? Why? What happened? What is, what is the problem with these people? A lot of times in our life, we go through hardship. The people of Israel went through a hard time. At one time, in Nehemiah chapter 110, he said, Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power. 
and by your strong hand. Sometimes we have to remind God, Father, you redeem us by your hand and by your power. And Nehemiah uh, reminded God that this is the people that you redeem out of Egypt. You brought them into the land of promise by your mighty hand. Lord, you save us from death and hell and you delivered us, Lord. Show forth your might, show forth your power. And by your mighty power, you deliver your people from darkness and from death. Amen. We thank the Lord tonight. I said we thank the Lord tonight. Amen. By the mighty hand of God and by the mighty power of God. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the other dwellings of Jacob. He loved the gates of Zion. So, when you go to the house of the Lord, it's a gate that you enter. When you go into your prayer closet, it's a gate that you enter. It's a gate that God loves. He adores when you go to his presence. He loves the gates of Zion, the dwelling place of God. He loved it. He loved it. He loves you. You want us to stand in a place where we will be able to be more than overcomers. Amen. Is yesterday, today, forever be the same. God never made us to be losers. Yes, the enemy wants to take you out. But I'm here to tell you tonight by the power of the might of the living God that the, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. The gates of hell, witchcraft, divination, and sorcery will not work against you. Whatever the enemy says, the devil can tell you tonight. I mean, many years ago, somebody was in business and a woman said to this person, I don't even fear your God. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord, I don't fear your God. Let me tell you, beloveds, in our ignorance, in our ignorance, in our ignorance, they will get away with it. But there's one thing I can tell you. When God shall forth his power and his might, the world will know that Jesus is Lord. Amen. And there is no other. Amen. Through the years, I've learned and I saw the power of God. I saw the hand of God. I saw the miracles of God. I saw what God can do. Sometimes I'm amazed mm -hmm. that the hand of the Lord is so powerful. The hand of God can do what no man can do. Amen. Amen. Man, he can make a man. There's a scripture in the Psalms that said he take you from the ashes and let you sit amongst princes. Mm. You could be so rejected and he will give you access with presidents. This is the power that in the name of Jesus Amen. where presidents will seek your counsel. Yes. I speak it over somebody's life that is watching that you will minister to presidents. You will give the word of the Lord to presidents. Why? Because this is what my God can do. Yes. He will do the impossible. He will do what no man can do. The gates of death have been shown to you. You know, there's also the gates of righteousness. Psalm 118 verse 19. The gates of righteousness. It's such a powerful gate. Um, 118. Verse 19. Am I now at the right scripture? 18. Yeah. He said, open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. Amen. 
The Bible tells me we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The gates of righteousness. What does the gates of righteousness mean? Beloveds, when you don't move in your own righteousness, your good works, your good deeds, it is the gates when you clothe yourself with yes, his God. righteousness. Because through his righteousness, you enter tonight. We stand righteous before God, not because of what we have done, but because of what Christ has accomplished for us through the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. We enter into the gates of righteousness. We stand before the living God and stand in his presence, magnifying his name. We give thanks to the Lord. Open for me the gates of righteousness and I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight that you open for us the gates of righteousness. We enter into your presence. We give thanks unto you, O Lord, that your word declare we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We do not stand in our own righteousness. We do not stand in our own ability. We do not stand by the ability ability of men or what men can do. No, we stand in your awesome and mighty presence. Open for me the gates of righteousness. Isaiah 60 verse 18. The gates of praise. The gates of praise. Praise is a gate. Enter his gates. With thanksgiving in my heart. Enter his courts with praise. Do you have a praise in your heart? Is your gate broken down because you're so downhearted? I mean, beloved, you're so depressed. Begin to praise him. Restore the gate of praise tonight in your life. Yes, Lord. But you might say, but Everything is wrong in my life. Nothing is going right. It's time that you praise God. It's time that you glorify His name. It's time that you say, Lord, even in my situation, I will praise you. Yes, Lord. Even in my poverty, I will praise you. Even in my disease, not my disease, this, even in your situation, you must praise him. Because the disease is not yours. It was already laid upon Jesus. The poverty is not yours. It was already laid upon Jesus. Amen. But in spite of it. You will magnify his name. You will praise him. You will magnify him. Why? Because praise is a gate. Into the presence of God. Into restoration. Into the fulfillment of the word of God into your prosperity, into your healing. It is time that you praise Him. I said it is time that you praise Him. Yes. Amen. Praise Him in the morning. Yes. Praise Him in the evening. Mm. Praise Him in the noontime. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting no destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. What does salvation mean? <coughs> salvation means deliverance, beloved. Salvation is a is the word in Hebrew, Yeshua, which basically means peace, which basically means healing, which basically means deliverance, which basically means everything you need is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The walls, salvation. So he is your salvation. He is your deliverer. He is your healer. He is your provider. He is the one that will bring you to a place of complete victory. And thy gates praise. It means when you open your mouth, you begin to praise him. How many times, I see many times when you pray for the sick. You pray for people. You wonder what's going on. And uh, 
nothing is going on, nothing is happening. And then you pray for people, they go according to their feelings. There's no praise in their mouth. They look for the symptom. They look for the condition. They will praise him when everything is gone. Now it's start praising him before the manifestation of your problem. Amen. Before the manifestation of your healing of your problem. Yes. Begin to praise him before the time. Begin to take your leap of faith and say, Lord, I thank you for my provision. I thank you, Lord, for my visa. I thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm going from one nation to another nation. Yes. I give you praise, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for more business opportunities, for brand new contract. I thank you, Lord, for my helper. I thank you, Lord. And the praise must be continually in our mouth. Amen. Yes. Not when everything is good. But when everything is bad, you still praise him. Bring a sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. Yes, Lord. You cannot have a sacrifice of praise if you don't go through bad times and you still praise him. It is the hardest for people to bring a sacrifice of praise. They would rather cry so that everybody will be sympathetic towards them and understand their condition and say, but they're going really through a hard time. Now, this is the time that we need to praise the Lord. Amen. This is the time actually more to praise Him than any other time of your life because He is a good God. He is a mighty God and he's an awesome God. He's a miracle working God. We honor him tonight. Yes. We thank him tonight. We praise his name tonight. We give him glory tonight. We thank him for his goodness. We thank him for his provision. We thank him for his healing tonight. We thank him that he came to give us life and give it more abundantly. Yes, Lord. The God that we serve is an awesome God. The God that we serve is a miracle working God. The God that we serve is a great God. Is yesterday, today, forever be the same. He came to give us life and give it more than abundantly. Hallelujah. I pray tonight that you will receive abundant life. The life of Jesus Christ. That he will bring you out of your captivity. But you will not be in distress. You will no longer be under reproach. Where people speak bad of, about you. No. Your life will be in. Um, how do they call that? That awesome moment. They will be amazed in what God is doing. The pro reproach over your life will be removed in the mighty name of the Lord. Distress is just there for a time. And I want to decree and declare tonight your distress is over. Yes. Your reproach is over. Amen. Why? Because God is doing something beautiful. Something powerful in your life. God is restoring the walls. The walls of salvation. Of healing. Amen. Of deliverance. Of freedom. That you will laugh again. That you will rejoice again. That you will walk in abundance again. That the joy of the Lord is your strength. That is joy unspeakable and full of glory. That you will magnify his name glorify his name and say Lord I'm so thankful and grateful for what you've already done I know you're going to do greater things in my life I know Lord I thank you for what you're going to do in the future oh Lord oh Lord I thank you for your mighty power I thank you Lord for your great grace upon my life I yeah, thank you that you'll lift me up from the miry clay yeah. and put my feet on a rock to stay I thank you Lord that I'm unmovable that the enemy when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against yes. the work of the devil yes. every power of hell that is raised up against it every arrow that's been fired into my life Lord yes. be 
destroyed. I thank you for the power of the blood. I thank you for victory. I thank you, Lord, that you gave us life and give it more abundantly. I thank you for the power of the blood of protection, Lord, that the that that no arrow can pass that uh, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I give you praise tonight. I give you glory tonight. Yes. Lord. I thank you, Lord. I give you praise tonight, Lord. Amen. Robo senda la bakurubunda riatana la mandia. Le manda la bakurubunda riatana la mandia. Robo satana la manda la bakurubunda. Father, we pray tonight for your people. We pray for the survivors. They will not be survivors anymore. Those yes. who came out of captivity. Their hearts will be healed. Their pockets will be delivered. Whatever they've been through, Father, they will be more than overcomers. Yes. Overcomers are people with great testimonies. Yes. Testimonies of the goodness of God. Of the power of God. Father, there will be no distress upon their life. No more reproach. Yes, Lord. We yeah. remove the reproach in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I give you praise. We prophesy, we speak over every wall that's been broken down, been destroyed by the enemy. Yes. The spirit of failure that's upon many people. We pray right now that uh, whatever the enemy used to defeat them, the wall will be raised up. They will begin to praise you for a mighty miracle. Yes. Mighty miracles of your grace, yes. of your power, and of your love. Thank you that you will do what no man can do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, I'm going to pray for the sick. We will think of our brother Claude tonight. The enemy attacks his body and uh, the Rotenbach family <coughs> and uh, some other families as well. That God will do something supernatural in their lives. Father, we break the power of hell, the spirit of infirmity upon the people of God. We break the power of sickness and disease. COVID-19 is dead dead in the name of Jesus. Cancer is dead in the name of Amen. Jesus. Sugar diabetes die in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I speak healing. I speak restoration. I speak the mighty power of God over their lives in the na name of Jesus. Be set free. Be set free. Father, we pray right now for every spirit of perversion, every demon of hell, that perverted the ways of the people of God. We break your power. We break your power. We break your power. We destroy your power in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise tonight, Lord. Set your people free. Set your people free. Amen. Set your people free. Amen. Set your people free tonight. Yes. Everyone that is in bondage, everyone that's in slave right now, we pluck them out of their slavery by the power and the might of God. Oh Lord, set them free tonight. Set them free tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for tonight for those who are going through hard times, marital problems, those who are suffering tonight in their marriages, in their families that are broken down, the walls of protection over the families, backsliding, drug addiction. We break the power of hell over their families. Alcohol abuse. We break that spirit of abuse over the life of the family of God. Amen. We break the spirit of abuse. We destroy the spirit of abuse. Yes. Amen. We destroy the spirit of abuse. Yes. We destroy the spirit of abuse tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Set your people free. Set your people free tonight in Jesus' mighty name.
Thank you for your healing power that's been released. Thank you for your mighty power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every crippling disease. I pray right now that your healing virtue and your power fall upon your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen and amen. Beloveds, it was so good to be with you tonight. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. I pray tonight that surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. God bless you in Jesus name. Amen.